so this is the uh, finished product I just wanted to um, show everyone um, how this ended up I think having everything here in the back may be a little bit too heavy um, because it's uh, tending to to do wheelies um, this I haven't um, finished fitting really as uh, as I really wanted to um, but also just need to secure okay, if I can secure that this won't uh, come out flying because um, I already had a little event where it did come out flying um, this uh, has different settings and you can set this up but um, this is very uh, lively as you can see and uh, my brakes are also pretty rubbish I must say So just need to be very uh, easy with that. Also, if you pedal without this, you get uh, you get power transferred to the wheel, so you get the assist. The thing is, if you give it uh, a bit of throttle, the wheel goes up. The front wheel goes up. So I think that could be, because um, I have a lot of the weight in the back. And the other reason might be that uh, so I just need to be very careful when turning because um, when you turn the front wheel goes up. And obviously you go sideways and my brakes my front brakes are really uh, pretty rubbish I must admit I definitely need to add some disc disc brakes to this but um, So yesterday I uh, nearly had an encounter with the floor as I was turning and I put the throttle on and um, the bike went out flying and the, and the, um, the battery came out and so on and so on. <laughs> it's a bit of a tragic situation there but But that's the bike there, it works, it's just a little bit too powerful, I believe. Um, so I have to learn to control the power, I can't really change that um, that motor now. I mean, what would I do with it? I have to put it on another small bike and it'll be the same result. Um, so I just wanted to show this uh, before um, the start of my video. This is the completed product. Um, I may consider moving the battery to the center to even out the weight. Um, but we'll see that may make the bike a little bit less uh, foldable. Though I don't know if I'll be folding this. Anyway, so here's the start of the video. Hi there everybody, on today's video um, it's a little bit of an unusual one for me but um, I'm, um, on this project I'm converting my um, folding bike into an electric um, e-bike basically um, I've got, I bought a wheel um, and obviously I have my original um, 
spike, which is that pro team. Um, and I wanted to see if I can actually convert it and make it electric. Uh, this is a whole new um, project for me. Um, so obviously um, there will be some uh, mistakes that I've made in the process. Uh, but um, but I did want to tackle this project myself, so I went ahead and and started um, buying uh, things like um, the electric motor there. Um, I've got the motor there. The motor came with a kit. It came with a um, controller, which I just um, cable tied to the back of the of the bike there. I haven't wired anything yet. Um, I also had to buy a tire and the tire um, needed the inner tube as well. So the tire on this is a little bit thicker than the original um, than the original wheel. Um, so the electric wheel there is a, is a 16 inch by 2.125 and my original one is 16 inch by 1.25 no by 1.75 so it's a little bit thicker um, and I'm hoping it will all fit nicely um, you may notice that I've already changed the sprockets so um, basically this was on the old wheel and for that, I didn't really have these tools, but to be able to remove the sprockets from the old tire, all the uh, from the old wheel, I needed one of these, one of these that fits in the center of the sprocket, and you can remove that sprocket, um, and then you also get this um, chain type of tool um, which normally it looks like an oil filter remover to be honest um, but in this case you wrap it around the the sprockets once you um, remove it from the old one and you put it on the new one on the new wheel you need to tighten it and to tighten it you use this um, the only thing is you need to find out what type of um, sprocket remover you need or I think that's called uh, cassettes and I think there's uh, different types of cassettes out there um, and I think there is two types of of um, tools that remove that so you will need to find out which one you have if you're going to tackle something like this um, so all of this is kind of a little bit new to me as well um, but we live and learn right <laughs> um, so I've gone ahead and done that now um, I've also also um, bought a battery pack casing so that's just the casing it's got no batteries in it it's just a kit again it's empty it comes as you see it um, and you need to build your own battery pack basically and fit it onto this and do some soldering and whatnot. You get the kit. These are the uh, the nickel bits that you're gonna solder on the well that I'm gonna be soldering on the batteries uh, or spot soldering really and you get also some extra stuff that you need to fit in this pack. Um, so this is something I will be doing separately I don't think I will be making a video of that um, because that would be the first time I'm making a, a battery pack and I think there's plenty of videos out there to show you how to um, how to build your own pack um, so 
we'll see how I get on with that. The idea is I'm, I'm making a 48 volt um, pack of uh, 17 amps, I think it was, which will be quite um, it's quite powerful, I guess. But um, but the wheel that I bought is a thousand watt wheel. Again, uh, I'm not sure whether that is a little bit too big for this bicycle. I mean, what I mean is it fits, but whether it's too powerful or too fast, I'm not really sure. Um, but it is a, an experiment project, so let's see how I get on. Uh, and it helps anybody uh, out there uh, make the better decisions, um, whether it's buying a smaller a wattage motor or that is also a 48 volt motor but there are 36 volts out there there's also 24 volts I think um, which will cost a bit less also the battery pack if you build one that is less than 48 volts and 17 amps then it will cost a lot less um, so it all depends what you might need or you might not need and how long this the battery can run for. Um, so what I'm going to be doing uh, today it's um, I've got obviously I have all the kit that came with the uh, electric wheel and everything needs to be fitted. I've got it all in here so this is the controls that's like the throttle there um, that's the little screen that is for the speed and so on. Um, I won't be fitting this stuff just yet because I first want to get the tire and the wheel all together and make sure it fits on the bicycle and then I can um, I will obviously tilt the uh, bicycle around and I have to decide where the battery pack will go and whether I'm actually gonna have the controller where I put it where I put it that's just a temporary fix um, and have to see how all the wiring is gonna go around uh, especially if I want this bicycle to still um, fold um, one thing I noticed on this wheel that on my original wheel this here is a little bit thinner this little um, bolt is skinnier than the one on that so the one on that is is shaved on both sides so it still fits it's it fits the bike um, but it just about fitted when I tried to put it in this way so the washers uh, that I'm given are quite thick. So the distance, this distance is quite uh, important. Um, what I did is to get it to fit nicely, I just, I widened this a little bit. I opened it a little bit and I'm talking about a few millimeters really, about five millimeters. And I just, I used a jack, basically a car jack that fits in there flat. And then you wind it and it opens this a little bit. Also want to make sure it fits because uh, I have these type of brakes. I don't have these brakes and so the whole wheel assembly has to really be able to fit here. I'm not sure, I may even have to remove this mud cover but we'll see. Um, the the electric wheel that comes with the package is also, um, you can put a disc brake on it, you can add a disc brake. It may be advisable, because obviously disc brakes are much more uh, eff effective. Um, Alright, so now that I've said everything that I had to say, I think, um, we can go ahead and start doing something and I just wanted to start with this I've got these, these were, I don't know, three pounds from Amazon 
um, and the tire, the tire was about 11 pounds from Amazon. The rest comes from China, um, from, um, was it AliExpress, I think it was. Just gonna go in like that. So I'm just going to uh, So with a bit of WD-40 that just uh, slides in there quite easily. Okay, uh, my tire and the uh, inner tube are in, so um, I think I'm just gonna pump some air onto this and see how, he, uh, how it works. Okay, got some air in it. Uh, I did struggle a little bit with the valve, which is a bit too close to the to here. So if, if I would recommend to get an inner tube would be the ones that come with a valve that is bent. It's got an, an ang uh, like a 90 degree angle basically. But nevertheless, I have to get in there. So now, ideally, when I try and get this wheel like that, and like I said, this is. Um, This nut there, it's got a flat, it's got two flat ends, basically. It's not round, which means it's got to fit in here in a certain way, but it's not really an issue. Okay, so that actually um, that's fitting all right. Um, the mud guard is a little bit close to it, so I will just have to work out um, a way to have it in there. Just needs to go a little bit further. Um, in this case, down. But if the bicycle was on its wheels, then it'll be it'll be a little bit up, so it can. It can be there just just about right. I mean, I don't mind mo modifying it a little bit because it just uh, that's all it needs, really. Um, okay, so I just removed that. Uh, just a 10 mil volt there, and that comes off.
It's pretty hard to remove this. Um, I actually use some uh, some pliers to get it out. You may want to cover it if you want to. If you don't want to damage it, cover it with some uh, something on it, and then use the pliers because I had to twist it, but I didn't have it, uh, enough strength on me to do it, so I had to use the pliers. But it can get a little bit damaged as well. So if you're planning to reuse those at some point, then uh, maybe a good idea to. to uh, use some uh, some protection in the kit we also get this um, this connect to the motor and you can attach your brakes in here But these these two wires are one wire, so um, so I removed the rear uh, brake wiring already, and just to obviously this is just a, an Allen key to get it off. So basically. Um, this will go in there and uh, that's one of the new paths again a little bit hard to push in Should hopefully get in there with a bit of persuasion. Um, maybe I should have put a little bit of grease or something in there, make it easier for me. But um, then again, I don't want it to be coming out. The next task, I'll have to remove this side as well and disconnect the front brake and attach. the uh, throttle bit. Um, also we have obviously the the LCD here. This plate can go anywhere really. Anywhere uh, convenient. Just trying to f to fit these things um, to have an idea of um, the layout, how it's all going to go. So um, I have a feeling I still have to push this in a little bit. So all of this will have to move, maybe a little bit towards that end. But so far so good. At the end of the day, all of that, all the wiring from this, even from the um, the brakes and that will go into into that controller. So again, um, I just wonder whether I should have the controller there or I could have it a little bit closer to that end because there's a lot of wires coming from the front um, and from the back there will be the motor wire which potentially could go towards the front it just might it, 
the whole thing might just be a little bit difficult to fold if I have too many wires going that way or too many coming this way um, and also because they need to have enough gap for this to fold now folding isn't my main issue um, as I may try to keep the bike as is but um, but if it needed to be folded then it will be ideal um, one more other thing is uh, there is that little pedal type of um, sensor there which I already fitted as you may be able to see I forgot about it, I forgot to mention um, that pedal basically has a little sensor here um, clearly I already plugged it in but um, basically uh, it's got this uh, wheel here that wheel just fits in there it's not secure it's secure by by itself basically but um, but that little wheel is like a magnet and uh, and that magnet basically um, as you turn when you turn the pedals when you pedal the bike it senses that you're pedaling and it switches on the motor to assist you um, maybe not there's something that you can switch off I think or not have if, if, if you don't want it but um, if you do want it basically when you start pedaling the electric wheel comes on and it assists um, with that so that's, that's what it really is that is for um, and it's, it's quite easy to fit as well you, you do need to remove the pedal and again uh, old bikes are different so showing how, how to remove it on this one perhaps it's not gonna work out on on yours or, or other models so uh, the main point of my video is to show you how I've, I've done the setup and what things I may have had to modify to get this going um, on this particular bicycle or if it's um, a 16 inch bicycle that you have so um, um, I may have to remove that because I just noticed I may be able to show you because I'll have to remove it again but I just noticed that I that little plate there is a magnetic plate it's got some arrows and those arrows are meant to go forwards and in this case I put it in and, and it's facing backwards but <laughs> I may have made that mistake when I was when I had the bicycle upside down and uh, obviously I didn't think about it so I'm gonna have to change that um, and uh, well I will carry on with the with the top here and I can see that I forgot I forgot to slide this in but um, but you can just uh, open it here no uh, this needs to be slided in really I can't you can't open this as such so I have to remove that handle and slide this in so I'm gonna go ahead and do that perhaps I don't need to film it because I know I'm going to struggle a little bit okay so far I'm happy with the progress um, I've managed to get that out and in again I've got the this little controller here I need to um, tighten that this um, controller here is, uh, shows you like lights um, and like a little horn symbol here and I think this here is to choose uh, what mode you want the bike on if you want it on eco or 
or a certain speed or, or fast a thing that um, works according to what you program it to on this um, this when this was sent to me it was, a document was sent to me as well um, that states it, it, it was already um, set to the motor so it said I don't have to do anything it's already been set to the motor but I do have instructions for it um, actually this and the motor and this kit I bought from um, a different company so um, I the battery pack and, and those things come from Aliexpress the the other stuff comes from a different company which I will um, uh, make a note I will put down on the description um, so you can have a look and see um, what products they have um, but that's where I bought the kit the wheel the controller and the handles and those uh, those things there thing was with me within a week even through this uh, during this uh, pandemic situation so um, yes yeah, so let's uh, we're gonna carry on now gonna have to do the other side now remove the the handle and remove the the brake um, handle there and fix fix the uh, the cable onto that um, this one obviously I haven't fixed anything on it because I don't have a break for the back at the moment so today um, I've got the, the little um, I've changed the brake so this is the the other brake lever now and it's got a wire on it this wire will connect to the to the motor uh, sorry to the controller and also I've connected the throttle here my throttle this I need to uh, tighten up but um, now I've got all the wires so all of that is uh, is fairly um, obviously easy to remove and, and fit um, and it, it really depends on each bicycle so it's not going to be the same procedure um, as this one but very similar um, so I'm just running down the wires along along the uh, the cables that were there before so the brake cable and this is for changing gears the gear cable that goes around the back and then all of this wiring we're gonna just uh, make it all nice and tidy and run it along the body to the controller um, so so far I'm still keeping the controller there at the back uh, and the battery will go on on the back rack there um, Again, I think that's the best place for me to have the battery. I'm still debating whether the controller, I can put it in the frame there, but then uh, then again, that frame there uh, bends when, this, when you fold this bicycle. Um, also, I'm having a bit of an issue with the, with the mudguard there. Um, it's not really fitting properly, so I may need to cut it and at least at least just put a portion of it um, so I can have some uh, some curvature if there is uh, some water obviously don't want it to be jumping up um, but that is just a minor um, I mean to begin with I may not even have it until I, I know how to um, find a way to modify it um, so I don't want to cut it by rushing and then I also adapted the little leg. I just had to grind 
grind it so it can fit in there basically so I tight I tightened that um, that nut already and um, it's all it's all pretty much getting there slowly but surely I'm just waiting for my batteries um, so I can make the the battery pack and and fit it somewhere I mean I may even fit it somewhere temporarily in the back rack just to uh, test the bike but um, um, all that wiring is pretty much um, it pretty much plugs directly into the into the controller um, the only soldering I think there might be some soldering that needs to be done but I'm not sure yet we'll, we'll find out um, as we go along okay so I, I need to um, I need to rotate this disc because I put it the wrong way around there's a little arrow there um, so to remove this pedal in this particular bike there is a 14 mil uh, nut in there and then this slides out but it can be a little bit hard to pull it out so I'm just using a, this, um, this side here um, it's a kind of material that is not going to damage my pedal here plus it's a little bit of awkward Okay, so we got the pedal out. Now we can pull this out. So basically, this little magnetic plate is <laughs> got the little arrows there, of which way it's going to be rotating. Um, I removed this here, abandoned it, and I fitted the sensor behind and then tightened that up in this arrangement. Um, other bicycles might be different. Also there might be some special tools for removing the pedals. I just had to tap it in with this but I didn't want to damage this plate and luckily it's not been damaged. It looks okay so now I'm gonna put it in the correct way and basically that just pushes in there and um, those little magnets there they cause that this sensor they, they pulse on this sensor and then and then the uh, the controller senses that you're cycle you're uh, pedaling and uh, uh, assists you with the electric motor so I can get this back on there Got my 14 mil there, and now I can get this little cap back on, and that's it. So that's the bit I wanted to show you because I haven't seen many people fitting that. And then obviously the cable just goes to the controller and literally just plugs into the controller. So um, I finish uh, the bike. I got it all um, in all the wiring, uh, the battery, all the batteries finally arrived. Um, I built the battery myself. Um, that is not something I'll make a video of because it's not um, it's not the kind of 
thing I, I do. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty much a novice at building batteries. Um, so this is how I, I managed to get this on here. I just put this, this plate on this and that is connected to the controller here. Um, I was just uh, testing it and um, this is this is very very um, powerful so um, as soon as you give it a little bit of throttle it, it starts going it's very lively and and also it, it almost wants to go on one wheel so um, you really need to learn to control the the throttle body uh, I mean the throttle there um, I don't know if it's uh, worth hav having such a powerful motor in this uh, such a small bike um, so from the experience now I can say um, have to be have to be very careful when using it as there is there is too much power on it um my battery is a 48 volts um so if it gives any ideas this is just a plank of wood where i got that secured onto and then i secured this to another bit of wood here and I, I bolted that on so this is a very very secure it won't um, it won't move um, it's the first time I used the, the bike today and like I said it's it's way too powerful um, so I think if anybody was uh, thinking of building one maybe a 350 watt motor would be enough this is uh, I think this is a 7 750 uh, and yeah it's way too much you give it a little bit of that and it starts doing wheelies <laughs> so um, anyway um, I hope the video helps uh, anyone that's trying to set up a similar arrangement Still little some bits and bobs to do, just get the wiring tidy, a little bit more tidy here. But um and I'm just gonna show you the battery in a minute. So this here is um my battery pack, the one I built for the bike. Um this came off and this bit came off because this fell out. <laughs> from the bicycle um, as I was riding it I put too much um, throttle and the back wheel went up well the front wheel went up uh, like a wheel is like I was saying um, it is a little bit too powerful and I hadn't secured this I didn't um, lock it in place so this came out flying and um, it basically sort of opened up a bit and that came off there it's not um, nothing nothing's happened to it luckily it, it was um, I plugged it back in and it was working fine but um, I'm just gonna open it and refit these uh, bits and perhaps I'll show you how I did the battery pack but there is many videos out there uh, some people with a lot of knowledge on how to uh, build this properly um, so um, you can you can uh, have a look at those I, I'll, I'll put a, a link to especially a guy that I really uh, like his videos and the way he explains how to put this together um, and um, I think um, I'm just going to open that and show you the pack. 
So this is uh, my battery pack. I just got to open here. Um, I have to solder this wire. This is just for the little LED, LED battery life indicator here. Not really sure how accurate that is. Um, that's that um, BMS, I think BMS is called. Um, so yes, I managed to put all these together. Um, this is the first time I ever built one of these. And uh, you really need to be careful when if you're gonna tackle one of these um, and as long as you follow instructions properly you should be all right but um, also definitely use this tape to cover the battery once you finish all the spot welding and uh, and that way you will avoid any shorts um, I've connected Originally, I had uh, the on and off switch connected to it to switch it on and off. But for for some reason, um, when I switched it on, there was no enough current going through to get to the to the e-bike to the bike itself. Um, so I just uh, disconnected the the earth from the from it and um, and connected it directly to the output so the negative I just connected the negative directly to the output before I had the negative connected to to this on and off switch and from the on and off switch to the uh, to the power but uh, I'm guessing this switch is not very good for some reason it's uh, not working very well okay so that's the last uh, wire I was just wiring that little brown I put a brown wire is uh, this black one here and that's just going to the negative there I just run it along the top here and that's basically to check the life of the battery um, so I think um, from an experience point of view it's uh, it's it's been it's very very interesting for me I've learned a lot about batteries and and how to put them together and how to work out the voltages and and how many amps um, as I really didn't have a clue um, so after a lot of research and stuff I managed to put it all together um, but the motor is too powerful that is one thing I learned um, could do with one that is much less powerful than that um, or perhaps the the battery pack can manage a less less output I'm not sure yet on that note but um, also um it's been um obviously you need quite a few things to put this together you need a solder you need the spot welder you need all this tape um all the batteries obviously um and you don't necessarily need this casing to put your battery pack together you can just do it um with some uh, wrapping um wrapping a uh, paper which you wrap it around which is heat resistance basically heat resistant uh, uh, wrapping uh, paper and um, it really up to you how how you how you do it but uh, if if you're gonna tackle something like this uh, be very careful yes because we're dealing with 48 volts not uh, like a car battery is 12 volts this is 48 52 they're quite high voltages really um so i i think overall uh, it was a great experience doing it um i have a extremely powerful tiny little bicycle now <laughs> which <laughs> i guess uh, i'm gonna be using mainly for uh, commuting a little bit and a little bit of fun 
maybe not that much until I get used to it properly as I don't want uh, any injuries um, like I nearly um, had earlier on um, and so also this just a little tip here but this does not seem to accommodate the BMS properly um, I had to slightly modify it inside of here I just had to cut some of the edges here to try and fit that as best as possible but there's still a little gap in here when it, when I fit that on I'm not sure how good that is also this uh, pack comes with a um, little USB port but you need to wire it as well it needs to be wired but um, the thing about this is I think you need a, a converter from 48 volts to, to 5 volts if you want to use that USB port um, otherwise you'll have 48 volts coming out of here and if you plug something in there uh, it potentially just gonna blow up so I'm thinking uh, this needs a converter to down the voltage to be connected but I don't really need these ports myself and the on and off switch it's up to you but I don't really know why it didn't work with me it did not want to switch the bike on and then I had to do some uh, investigating until I found that it, that was the issue um, overall um, I hope this video helps making people some decisions um, on what to choose especially if you have a tiny bike like I said maybe a 350 watt motor will be ideal and perhaps a 36 volt uh, battery pack uh, would, would be much uh, much more um, safer and efficient this is good maybe for a bigger bike with bigger wheels and so on um, so this is the end of uh, this journey if you have any questions um, and I can answer anything I'll be happy to do so um, but otherwise uh, I hope this video helps and thank you for watching